good afternoon all so fabricate an end to end development platform that's the topic for today my name is baiju uh before starting i just want to ask some question like how many of you actually uh, added a new issue or a comment on some issue maybe in github or jira or bugsila somewhere through your mobile or laptop or things like that i mean on while you are traveling maybe in bus or train something like that just raise your hand yeah so you done that through your mobile right now imagine something going beyond that you are doing an end to end development from your uh, some maybe in a internet cafe or a kiosk something like that so this is that's just a clue what i am going to speak about okay an end to end development experience so before going to that a uh, few things uh, about me uh, i am a senior software engineer at red hat i have been as uh, pradeep to mention i have contributed to so many software free and open source software in the past for last almost 18 years now and uh, yeah so let me not take much time there but you might be hear this kind of terms uh, in recent articles or websites or talks like this right now every company is a software company uh, software is eating the world you don't have to be a software company to think like one every business will be a software business so this kind of quotes you are hearing a lot this all giving an indication that now everyone needs some kind of software development uh, in their organization along with that you also hear things like microservices uh, containers mobi rook uh, rocket or docker and things like container orchestration uh, kubernetes things like that right and pass open shift now we know that software is been become such an essential part of every company and this kind of complexity for developing application is also becoming very uh, difficult with all these things innovation everything so this is where fabricate is coming to picture imagine uh, so what's happening here is that it fabricate is solving the problem of uh, developing an end to end application with this all large complex microservices all all this kind of uh, deployment uh, strategies uh, in everything you do it in a setting up everything from a web browser okay so you can do this uh, from your ideation phase going beyond production things like maybe monitoring and getting feedback things all things you can do now so basically uh, as i mentioned before the containers or you know things like that is something now people are talking about cloud native application so you can do cloud native creating uh, cloud native applications and microservices through fabricate uh, in simple terms i can tell you that you can do planning building testing deploying your application through pipelines through fabricate all in your browser so you can run and manage your uh, application uh, from the uh, through continuous improvement uh, through this platform okay so this is how a typical schematic of this platform underneath technology that we are using here is uh, open shift uh, which is the pass uh, platform and then we have built our own platform on top of that uh, and then there are other components like some authentication layer and then a planner uh, which is basically a, uh, you know this uh, planning part and code base uh, where you can manage git and then and full fledged id a pipeline uh, which is built on jenkins a code generator this all are provided by uh, 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 the, you know this uh, fabricate so the first part is the uh, platform uh, which is the foundation for the system so basically you can um, you know this is the providing all the restful api uh, which is built in uh, go programming language which is i am passionate about uh, and then uh, its front end is written in angular 4 and pattern fly which is again built on boot, bo built on bootstrap things like that and so this is how a typical as soon as you log into the system this is how you the uh, you know this uh, main dashboard looks like now uh, it's going to change soon uh, then the next component is an uh, key sso where you can uh, if it provides a identity and access management system which is again built on top of another open source component called key clock uh, and uh, this uh, you can check it out from the keyclock.org website and the com uh, the planner component is uh, basically you can imagine like a project tracker or an issue tracker uh, where you can again it provides a restful api uh, with the front end again back end is written in the golang 
and front end again the same technology which I mentioned angular for and uh, pattern fly bootstrap etc. So, this is how a typical the planner looks like where you can do this uh, idea your discussion your uh, to do list or items uh, work items. Uh, the next thing is uh, the code editor. Uh, so, you need an ID right or a text editor. So, basically uh, we are using Eclipse J as the code editor uh, where you can through the web browser you can edit and this project is part of the Eclipse foundation. You can go to the eclipse.org slash J that is what we are using here. The next com, uh, so this is how a typical uh, editor looks like. This is a browser actually uh, may not looks like a browser, but this is a browser and of course, I moved to that part. So, the where it is a full fledged ID where you can do all your development with a shell everything and you can che check in your code through the system itself. Now, uh, the next part is a build pipeline. Uh, morning you might be here to talk uh, from uh, my colleague uh, Vashek. He was mentioned about the pipeline. So, this is also bit built on top of this um, open shift pipeline which is uh, fabricate. So, uh, underneath technology is nothing but Jenkins. Uh, again, it is an open source project which you can check out from Jenkins. I, I hope everyone know about this project. And uh, this is how the uh, UAM uh, looks like uh, from our fabricate platform. Um, yeah. Uh, where you can approve your build, promote your build, all the things you can do through these things, okay. Uh, the, uh, now, I will show you a, a small demo uh, how this entire system looks like. Um, okay, right now actually I am going to show you the demo which is uh, a hosted version of this fabricate uh, that is uh, openshift.io which is a SaaS offering from Red Hat. Um, but soon you can uh, we'll be able to set it up locally also later, okay. So, as soon as you go to this, by the way, the site is called openshift.io, uh, that is where it is hosted, and uh, you will be able to log in. Uh, and then, uh, right now, this is an you will be in waiting list if you try it out, but later, once you log in, you will be able to you will get all these features that I just mentioned now. So, you can uh, do this, uh, create something called a space where you can do all your activities. So, for every organization or individual, they need to create a space. And this is the, uh, you know, the planner where you can uh, do track all our issues, uh, do all the adding work, so what we are calling it as work items, you can prioritize things uh, and then it also has some kind of uh, uh, Kanban board kind of things, uh, maybe you are seeing something like a Trello where you can, uh, you know, move things around, all the things you can do through uh, this fabricate planner. And then it uh, provides a way to quick start your project. Uh, basically, you can uh, start a, a new project from scratch, uh, which uh, built on some templates. Uh, here, right now, we are supporting this uh, OpenShift IO. It supports few things based on Java, like uh, uh, Vertex or Spring Boot, uh, and then Wildfly, things like that. But soon, we are going to support more other, uh, maybe Python, Node.js, other applications also. And once you uh, are okay with your selecting your stack, uh, you can uh, click on finish or you can configure further uh, and then that is uh, going to take you to the, uh, your project will be pushed into the GitHub. Right now this supports GitHub, so that means your all your code is going to the GitHub, uh, that URL, that whatever it is displayed here. And afterwards, you can uh, edit, you can click on this, uh, open the editor, so that is going to check out this code from GitHub and you got a workspace there and now you can uh, click on that, it will take you to editor your IDE which is nothing but Eclipse J and you can make all your changes, code changes, modify the code uh, and then finally commit your code. Yeah, it is going, uh, right now it is doing and then and here just one more point here is that just we also have a uh, recommendation engine which actually uh, pointing out some kind of vulnerabilities or issues in your system uh, that uh, uh, gives you hints so you can modify your code accordingly. In this case, it shows something like a, there is a vulnerability for this particular version of this package. So, you can modify that instantly and make your changes and push the code into GitHub. Yeah, it is pushing the code into uh, GitHub. Once you push your code, that is going to trigger the build pipeline. So, here uh, it can say that immediately it will start your the pipeline. Uh, that pipeline is going to take you, you can uh, based on your strategy, it may push into your dev staging environment or maybe directly to push or you can uh, choose to uh, make a manual trigger process and approval process. Yeah. So, that is a brief demo about uh, this fabricate. So,
So what, what I brought, uh, try to show in this demo is that basically Fabricate or the, is providing a streamlining the software development from ideation uh, to production, everything through the browser. Okay. So this all are open source softwares and we welcome contributions. Uh, that was the intent of this talk. We are in the uh, very early stage of development. We are still actively developing this project. Uh, all these things you can uh, download from, uh, I mean, get it from the Fabricate.io and the source code, everything is there in this GitHub repositories, uh, Fabricate.io and other few other repositories there. So we welcome contributions. Uh, <coughs> And if you want a real live system, I can maybe, I, ha I think I have a few more minutes. I can show this really running there in my browser. Uh, I hope my internal connection is working. So this is OpenShift IO. Uh, you can see this uh, reports. Maybe I can click on something. Maybe stack report. Yeah, looks like it's coming up. Uh, okay, that's the stack report. It says that recommended to use some package. And I, if I want to create something called a new, I mean, maybe this is some issue in your, uh, what the, uh, I remember that uh, analytics, uh, data analytics and you know the recommendation engine which pointed out that there is something wrong with this uh, package so you need to fix that maybe a vulnerability or something like that so i can create a work item directly from here by clicking on this button uh, okay yeah looks like it's created a new work item issue so maybe i can uh, click on that and uh, later work on that issues okay and this is the eclipse j uh, editor where i can uh, i just already opened that otherwise i need to navigate and open i can make modifications uh, this is how it is. So maybe I'll stop right now. Uh, if there is time, maybe I can take two questions. One or two questions. Yeah, there, can, there is a time for at least one question. Oh, I see the There you go. Yeah, J is a, a full-fledged IDE which supports almost every programming language that you uh, can imagine. So the, re the real question that I have is typically if I'm using, I'll give you an example. So typically if I'm running a Django application and I use PyDev, I yeah. can set breakpoints and a whole lot of things with the run server and things like that, right? Yeah. So do I have that kind of facilities as part of J is the question because I've not looked at J, that's why I'm asking this question. Yes, uh, J has uh, at least, let's say, for some of the things that you do like codes, highlights, syntax highlighting, this all the things are supported for almost all editors, yes. I mean, sorry, uh, this J editor supports all the uh, languages, Python, Java, uh, everything. And is there a possibility where I can plug in, plug in another ID, yes. like a Sublime or something like that instead of J, for example? Yeah, definitely. By the way, uh, J has a, a feature to do SSH into the system, so you don't necessarily use to, you need to use J. You can do your coding edit, code editing locally, and that still you can use the rest of the platform. Okay. Hi, I have a question about the recommendations that were appearing in the, yeah. uh, the, the code editor. Yes. So are, they were only for Java, but uh, do they exist for Python or other languages? Uh, yeah, you mean, yeah, uh, we are working on this uh, Python uh, also. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out this uh, every uh, this analytics, you can go to Fabricate uh, Analytics. This is a rough, uh, organization. Uh, it's all written in uh, Python. Oh, so, uh, spelling may be mistake. Fabricate. Sorry. Fabricate iPhone Analytics. That's where you can get all your code, and it supports right now Java, but it supports uh, Node.js, uh, Python, uh, other languages also. Yeah, this is the organization where you can see all the code for the analytics platform. Cool. Thank you, Baiju. That's uh, you can talk to Baiju about Fabricate.io and OpenShift.io at the K Red Hat booth. Um, cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.